from the Leaders Factory comes Leadership Secrets with Dr. Michael Huttonwood, designed to help you maximize your potential with principles that guarantee proven results. Knowing and cultivating certain attitudes about yourself will give you the mindset you need to develop your leadership potential to the fullest and fulfill all that you are born to do. Join Dr. Michael Huttonwood for Leadership by Creativity, Principles for Success, Secrets for Creating Change, and much more. You are born to lead. Jesus came to restore you back to leadership. Get back your leadership position. Let the earth know that you were here. Join your host, Dr. Michael Huttonwood, a man on a mission, and experience a destiny-changing encounter with today's message on Leadership Secrets. Nothing extraordinary ever happens to anybody who is not ready to go the extra mile. Nothing extra comes without extra input. Extras only come to those who do extra. If you put in just enough, you get just enough. If you put in more than enough, you get more than enough. So your lot in life is determined by what you put in. So you cannot take out of life what you have not put into life. And we have also discovered that only changed men change their world. Only stretched men stretch their influence all over the world. Only stretched men, people who you see have a global, global significance or impact have stretched themselves globally. If the only information you have is local, you only impact locally. If your information base stretches globally, then you impact globally. You cannot extend yourself beyond your investment in yourself and on yourself. And then I remember mentioning last week that it is resourcefulness that determines your resources. How resourceful you are to do new things instead of the same old boring things, things determines the resources that you attract. You give the same offerings, you run a shift with God in paying tithe, you run a shift with God in coming to church, and yet you expect more money or more out of life. Life does not work that way. You only get out of, yesterday I was preaching in a church and I said to them, how on earth can any human being expect God to arrive on time when they are always late? You give your tithe late and you expect God's harvest to come early. When the principle says, whatsoever a man sows, it is, it is, it is a law. Are you all here? It is a what? You don't get out of life what you don't put into life. Are you all here? You, what you put into life is what you take out of life. You see, it is illegal to reap something you have not sown. It is illegal. It's free. It is illegal to go to the bank and demand one million pounds when you only put in one pound fifty. It's illegal. You only take out of life what you have put what into life. So, if what, what, if you want more out of life, what should you, should you put into life? If you want more out of life, and the law indicates that whatsoever a man sows is that which he shall reap. If you want more out of life, what should you put into life? Hello? You should put in what? You should put in what? If you want less out of life, what should you put in? If you want distinction in school, what should you be? Distinct, distinguished. Put in the effort that will bring distinction. You put in average, what do you get back? Average. You put in excellent, what do you get back? Excellent. 
So tell your neighbor one more time. I've tell them, I've been telling you since the past three weeks. Nobody is doing you. <laughs> you are doing you. You only take out of life what you what? Put into life. Nobody studies to pass exam for you. Not even your beloved, dearest husband or wife. I'm yet to see a husband do a test for his wife. No matter how much in love they are. You only take out of life what you put into what? Life. Whatsoever a man sows, or whatsoever a woman sows, that's what he shall reap. So tell your neighbor, stretch yourself to get stretched blessings. Say it again. In order to influence the world globally, you must pay a global price. Write that down. To influence the world globally, you must pay a global price. I said last week, anytime you hear the word church, whose name do you remember? Anytime you hear the word church, whose name do you remember? Who? Jesus. Jesus is the founder of the church. Anytime you hear the word church, whatever church, the first name that comes to mind is Jesus. Anytime you hear Easter or Christmas, who comes to mind? Jesus. He made global impact. Uh -huh. He paid the price for God so loved the world. So he had what in mind? The world. So he paid a world price, a global price. That's why, lift up your head now. You can write this, lift up your head. That's why, that's why this book, leaders are not born, but leaders are raised. Leaders are not born, leaders are made. <clears throat> leaders and great men and great women are not born, but are made by hard effort. Write that word down. Great people are made by hard effort. Leaders are not born. Leaders in any field of endeavor are not born. Leaders are raised. Leaders are not born. Leaders are made by hard effort, which is a price that all of us must pay to achieve any goal that is worthwhile. Any goal that is worthwhile, a price must be paid for it. You want a solid marriage, you must pay a solid price. You want a mediocre marriage, you pay a mediocre price, and you just take a mediocre marriage. I mentioned last few weeks that Benjamin Franklin said, if you would not be forgotten, <clears throat> and this quote is in my new book, if you would not be forgotten as soon as you are dead and rotten, either write things worth reading or do things worth the writing. Benjamin Franklin said, if you will not be forgotten the day you die and you are rotten in the grave, do things worth writing about or do things worth reading about. People who, we, we, we spoke about Michael Faraday today, Albert Einstein and Benjamin Franklin, and all these people, we still remember them to today because they did things worth writing about and things worth reading about. Receive that grace in your lifetime to do things worth reading about and things worth writing about. I said receive that grace. I said receive that grace. I said receive that grace. You don't have to make noise to make news. Just make the news headlines by doing something worth hearing, something worth reading, something worth writing about. You don't have to make noise to make news. Those who make news are very noiseless. They don't make noise, but they make the news. You don't have to make noise, shout about your achievements. Just do it, and the media will look for you and interview you. You don't have to go and appeal to them, come and interview me. They will hear of you, and they will come looking for you. Don't make noise, make news. Tell your neighbor, don't make noise. Just make the news headlines. 
with your achievements. None of us met Jesus. None of us met Einstein. None of us met uh, uh, Michael Faraday. None of us met great men and women. Some of us never met Nelson Mandela. But we read about them. Why? They did things worth reading about. So, you see, when I hear people, when I see people engaged in gossip and all those, whatever it is, I don't remember the last time I gossiped. I don't remember the last time I heard of anybody gossip in our church. You must have time on your hands. You must have time on your hands to gossip. It's one of the most futile exercises, useless, non-profitable, demonic, demented, insane behaviors any Christian can ever be involved in. You are insane. That individual or those people are what? Insane. You have nothing better to do with your life than gossip. Yes. Yes. Hello? Right. Now, you better say amen if you are not guilty. Amen. Now, let me see your smile if you know you are not the one I'm talking about. I don't know your case. I'm a man of God and I'm just preaching. Look, there's so much to do, so much to be accomplished, and then sippy sippy. Ah. You know, I can see my destination. It drives me. I don't take every phone call, that can, especially if you call my house. One of the mistakes you can ever make is to call my house and, and, and the thing show withheld. House of Judah, in association with Leaders Factory International, presents Higher Heights 2014, The Emergence of World Changers, with special guest speaker, Pastor Matthew Ashimaloo, KICC. God has crossed his hands. Favor is coming to your house. When it is all over, the devil will be shaken off. And your host, Bishop Michael Huttonwood, People are not disadvantaged, they are just ignorant. It's ignorance that pre keeps people from enjoying certain things. From the 24th of October through to the 26th at House of Judah, first floor Palm Croy House, 387 London Road, Croydon, CR 03 PB. Details are shown on your screen. Please call 020-689-6010 or visit www.houseofjudah.org.uk for further details. Withheld. Unavailable. So, you are unavailable. I should be available. <laughs> are you ready for me today? Look, we are on a roll in the House of Judah. I mean, if the call is worth taking, let your name show. Hello? Unavailable. Then you, a visionary, make yourself available to answer an unavailable. Some people may say, these pastors, this day, they have audacity. Okay, you can say what you want. What it is, is we are visionary. We have a ah, withheld. So I'm you are withheld. <laughs> Why should I, I upheld? <laughs> yeah. That's why we have caller ID on the phones. You're going to call me and you do 141, then you dial my number, and then the thing says unavailable. Then I make myself available to your unavailability. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. They are sending calls that come to 0845, 0800. It's not happening. They come to talk about marketing. I don't need what they need, what they have. So let, if you want to call me and you are serious about the call, let your name show. Maybe some of you haven't thought of it that way before. That's why probably you are quiet. No, no, no. Unavailable, withheld. <laughs> you even be surprised that we don't, when even we see the word international, Sometimes we don't answer it because we know what is coming. Does, does any African here know what is coming? Who does? What is coming? What is coming? Ah, you are my people, man. You are my people. <laughs> A demand for the unavailable for yourself, which they want made available for them. You are not being wicked. You are just being wise. 
Shout amen. amen. Write this down. Newsmakers don't watch news. They make the news. Become a newsmaker. Don't be a noise maker. Empty barrels make the most noise. Achieve things and let them make write news about your achievements. Don't make noise. Make news. Newsmakers are noiseless people. So whatever it takes to make your mark in the world, please, ladies and gentlemen, please get ready for it because there is something great in store for you. Leaders are not born. Leaders are made. Whatever it takes to make your mark in your world, get ready for it. Prepare for it while it is night. For the day is coming when your significance will be seen and you will become a sought out one. Say a big amen. amen. Why must you get ready and stay ready? Because success consists of little daily efforts and failure consists of little daily neglects. Please write it down. Success, get ready for your destination now. Get ready for the change you require in your life and in your family and in your destiny and your career. Get ready for it. Stay ready. Stay prepared. Don't just get ready. Stay ready. So when the opportunity comes, as soon as David landed and saw Goliath, he knew that is my ticket to the palace. That's my ticket. That's my license to greatness. I will whip this boy. When opportunity comes, it's not now you are getting ready to learn how to speak English. It's not now you are learning about leadership. When you are about to be given a management position, a CEO, you know, when they put my poster up there as one of the CEOs on the leadership crew in Ghana, I'm already, I've been already ready for this CEO speaking engagement. I've been ready for years. You see, don't let opportunities pass you by because you are not ready for it. You see, every day, you must be getting ready for your destination. Oh, my God. Am I alone in this house? Every day. You see, live like your bishop. A man on a mission. Look, whether there's one person in church or two persons or half persons in church, I will preach and put it on YouTube. Millions. People take pictures of themselves. And put it on YouTube and make million one person dancing and then they recognize them I don't need thousands first before I preach once there's microphone and there's camera let's get it on put it Amen. Bible school people you understand put it Amen. put it put it I'm always ready yesterday I was in Bible school and I had to pop out to go and do some mama B stepped in ready Ready. Have you ever heard in Ghana, ever ready battery? Stay. Don't just get ready. Do what? Stay ready. Because, you see, you never know when an opportunity. David's brothers were there. Goliath was making all the noise. David's brothers were on the scene. David came from behind and saw not a mountain, but an opportunity. Sometimes Goliath is not a mountain, it's an opportunity. And if you are ready, you can discern that is my opportunity. Is somebody shouting here? Yeah. I said, Is somebody shouting here? Yeah. I said, Is somebody making some noise? Yeah. When doctors see sick people come to their surgery, they say, Opportunity to make money. Uh huh. Success consists of little daily efforts. Failure consists of little daily neglects. Your daily routine, write this down, your daily routine determines to a large extent how you will turn out in life. What you do every day shows whether you are serious or not serious. People only take serious those who are serious. In this church, we are only committed to those who are committed to this church. We are not committed to people who are not committed to the church. No. God is not committed to believers who are not committed to him. 
God is not committed to people who are not committed to him. That's why he doesn't bless everybody. You must be committed to God for him to be committed to you. Because what you sow, it works everywhere. Every time we see what you do every day, we are able to tell whether by December you'll be somewhere or anywhere. Your daily routine, not my daily, my daily routine determines where I arrive in life and the places I go and who I speak to. Your daily routine will tell whether you'll be a success or you'll be a failure or in between. Your daily routine, not my daily routine. What you do every day will determine where you end up in life or your status in life. What you do every day or don't do every day determines your status in life. That's the way it is. Is somebody getting something here? Are you paying attention at the back there? Write this down. Success has no uncles. Success has no uncles. No relative is responsible for where you are in your life. You are. <laughs> so don't wait for an uncle to die. They are not dying now. Learn from the queen. Learn from who? The Queen of England. Success has no uncles. Now write this down. Children, write this down. The only place where you the only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. Are you sure you are ready for church? You sure? The only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. The only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary because s comes before w but under normal circumstances work determines your success so work comes before success so the only place you will find success come before work is in the dictionary so it's in a book yes in a book one section s and w but in life it does not work that way if you refuse to work you will fail so, your success is determined by your work level, the input, your inputs into life, your inputs. Write this down. Formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. Formal education will make you a living. Formal education gives you a job, certificate, and application of jobs, especially civil servant jobs, or unskilled, or semi-skilled. <laughs> Formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. Please make note of all these things, very important. Formal education will make you a living, something to live on, to get by. But self-education makes you create wealth. Formal education makes you a job seeker. Self-education makes you a job creator. That's why you need this book. Leaders are not born. Leaders are determinedly, dedicatedly, focusedly, sacrificially made. Amen. This is my fourth or fifth sermon this weekend. Fifth sermon this weekend. And I'm finishing this afternoon. So this weekend I'm preaching six sermons. And all different. What if I didn't learn? Because you don't preach the same sermon in each place. Schooling is not the end of education. It's just the beginning. Write it down. Many people finish school and they think that's it. That's why their life has finished. That's why their life has what? Finished. They think schooling, getting a certificate is the end of education. No. Schooling is just the beginning of education. Continuous learning is what makes you the fortune. Schooling is just the beginning of education. 
So when you finish school and have a degree, first degree, second degree, whatever, that is not the end of education. Formal education makes you a living. Continuous education, self-education, is what creates your wealth and your fortune in life. So how rich do you want to be? That should determine how often you learn. When I give you 200 pounds now, all I need to do is give you one week or one month and ask you what you did with the money and I'll be able to tell where, which kind of Christmas food will be on your table. House of Judah, in association with Leaders Factory International, presents Higher Heights 2014, The Emergence of World Changers, with special guest speaker, Pastor Matthew Ashimolowo, KICC. God has crossed his hands. Favor is coming to your house. When it is all over, the devil will be shaken off. And your host, Bishop Michael Huttonwood, People are not disadvantaged, they are just ignorant. It's ignorance that keeps people from enjoying certain things. From the 24th of October through to the 26th at House of Judah, first floor Palm Croy House, 387 London Road, Croydon, CR 03 PB. Details are shown on your screen. Please call 020-689-6010 or visit www.houseofjudah.org.uk for further details. Is a man on a mission. With a mandate to raise generational leaders. Called to set in order the things that are out of order. And to bring leadership development human capacity building, and wealth creation to all. Welcome to Maximizing Destiny with Dr. Michael Hutton Wood from the House of Judah, the Leadership Factory, raising generational leaders, impacting the nations. Also watch us on KICC-TV for Leadership Secrets and Maximizing Your Destiny series every week, Monday through Saturday. Your host, Bishop Michael Huttonwood. Where God isn't, there is no vision. And where there is no vision, the people perish. And where there are no people, Details the are shown perish. on your screen. Please call 0208-689-6010 or visit www.houseofjuda.org.uk for more details. Thank you for tuning in to Maximizing Destiny with Dr. Michael Hutton Wood from the House of Judah, the Leadership Factory, raising generational leaders, impacting the nations. We hope you have been blessed. From the Leaders Factory comes Leadership Secrets with Dr. Michael Huttonwood, designed to help you maximize your potential with principles that guarantee proven results. Knowing and cultivating certain attitudes about yourself will give you the mindset you need to develop your leadership potential to the fullest and fulfill all that you are born to do. Join Dr. Michael Huttonwood for Leadership by Creativity, Principles for Success, Secrets for Creating Change, and much more. You are born to lead. Jesus came to restore you back to leadership. Get back your leadership position. Let the earth know that you were here. Join your host, Dr. Michael Huttonwood, a man on a mission, and experience a destiny-changing encounter with today's message on Leadership Secrets. Schooling is just the beginning of education. So when you finish school and have a degree, first degree, second degree, whatever, that is not the end of education. 
Formal education makes you a living. Continuous education, self-education, is what creates your wealth and your fortune in life. So how rich do you want to be? That should determine how often you learn. When I give you 200 pounds now, all I need to do is give you one week or one month and ask you what you did with the money and I'll be able to tell where, which kind of Christmas food will be on your table. If you give me 200 pounds now, it's very likely <laughs> I'll be buying books and DVDs. Definitely not food. No. Huh. Mm -mm. And I know some people are making some drastic changes here. Because parliamentarians are coming from here. Amen. Counselors are coming from here. Amen. Business tycoons are coming from here. Amen. Global influencers are coming from here. Amen. If you are one of them, shout a better amen in the house. Amen. It comes by your invest. You are ready for change. Change, change. Something, look at somebody and say, something must change in my house. Something, something somebody says something must change in my house. So schooling is not the end of education. Children, youth, schooling is not the end of education. It's just the beginning. And then write this down. This is for politicians and government officials across the globe. No nation ever rises above its investment in education. No nation ever rises above its investment in education. No nation. No nation ever rises above its investments in education. So no individual will ever rise above the level of their education. You see, you'll be shocked to discover that they are not developed nations. They are only developed people. No nation by itself is developed. It's the people, the developed people, that make the nation developed. In every nation, there are developed people and undeveloped people. In every nation, including Europe. There are rich people and then there are poor people. All by choice. Some by inheritance or some by background. But something can change if the individuals want to see change. So I've always said, it's not the nation. It's the individual. Write this down. Quality education is fundamental to national transformation. Quality education. So those of you in school, in uni, please pay now. Play later. And after you've got your degrees, continue to learn. It may not be pursuit of an academic degree, but self-develop for your destination. Am I helping somebody here? Is somebody glad they came to church today? Yes. Look. I wish all the singles in the house and the precious single parents, I wish you were at the singles conference where I taught on 21 things, 21 productive things you must do while you are a single person or a single parent. Single parent, being a single parent is not a minus. You can still become everything God has called you to be if you will pay the price. Your children go to bed and then you are investing in yourself. Google, internet books, DVDs, CDs. Not Hollywood, Nollywood, Gollywood, Bollywood. Only Hollywood, Bollywood, Nollywood, and now Ghana, Gollywood. They say some of the actresses in Ghana are bleaching their skin so they look more like the Westerners. When you are black, present your gift as black. You don't have to bleach your skin or change your surname to become great in life. When you have what they need, they'll pronounce your name. What is Nchoku? What is that? What is Guedeko? I mean, what on earth? What kind of name is that? But 
a great man married it. Married her. I mean, <laughs> married her. <laughs> eh? A great woman married Mr. Inchoko. So, please, your, what I'm trying to... Your name is not a minus. Amen. Am I speaking to some people in the house? Yes. Your name is not what? Amen. A minus. Amen. What's the name of the United, United Nations General, uh, Secretary General? What is that? Listen to it. Say it. Isn't it easier to pronounce Hatton Wood or Smith or Kevin than say it? Now, did that disqualify him from being the United Nations General Secretary? Exactly. You know, there are a lot of people who don't rise into prominence because they look down on certain things about their lives and their history and their background and their color. Color is not a disadvantage. Color is a plus because if God wanted you to come in another color to fulfill your destiny, he would have made you that color. Your color should never, ever be used as a negative. Amen. Amen. Quality education is fundamental to national transformation. And then write this down. To be intellectually bankrupt. To be intellectually bankrupt is to be socially, economically, and politically bankrupt. To be intellectually bankrupt is to be socially, politically, and economically bankrupt. So, bankruptcy begins with your intellect. If you are bankrupt in your mind, you will be bankrupt socially, bankrupt economically, bankrupt financially, and bankrupt politically. That's why many politicians in Africa get into office and do all kinds of crazy things, and they are nowhere to be found because they didn't use their head. No nation rises above its investment in education. No family rises above its investment in education. No family, no individual rises above its investment in education. And please remember, when I say education, I'm not only talking about schooling. So thank God for your certificates, but don't stop there. That's the problem of many people. B.S.C. from Ghana, M.S.C. from Ikeja University, Ph.D. from Oxford. What job are you doing now? Decorating dead bodies. Because you didn't use your head. You have the degree, but you're not using your brains. You see, there are so many people with all kinds of degrees who are so stupid, it's unbelievable. You see, learning in school doesn't mean, doesn't make you brainy. Uh, I don't, am I, am I? Learning a subject in school does not mean you are intellectually sound. If you learn everything you learn in school, but you don't use your head, you'll be at the bottom, despite your degrees. How many people don't you know who have degrees, who are doing, I mean, what has MSc, ACCA, ACMA got to do with cleaning? Let me teach you something here for free that I've just been reminded of. Please write the word physical gifts. Physical gifts. And write the word minded gifts. This will change your life. Physical gifts. Minded gifts. Now lift your head. What would you describe Michael Ty Mike Tyson's physical gift as? What would you describe it as? Boxing. Boxing. What would you describe Evander Holyfield's physical gift as? Boxing. What would you describe Wesley Snipes' gift as? Acting. Just to use these few names, Mike Tyson made over half a billion US dollars when he was boxing. Years later, 
he declared bankruptcy. Even that Holyfield, something similar. And some time back, I heard that Wesley Snipes, of all the money he had made, actually ended up probably in prison, like Mike Tyson. Now, they had physical gifts. But you see, physical gifts alone, without minded gifts, using your mind, you lose everything you've got. In every seed is a forest, and in every follower is a leader. Leaders are not born, but Leaders Are Raised is an insightful book by one of the leading authorities on leadership, Bishop Dr. Michael Huttonwood. People are not disadvantaged, they are just ignorant. Shows you some of the steps and qualitative processes involved in how leaders evolve through nurture and development. Leaders are not born, millionaires are not born, wealthy people are not born, they are made. You become what you want to be by the choices you make in life. You were not born rich. I mean, from your mother's womb, on your face, rich. System, rich. You may have been born to rich parents, but you were not born rich on your face. You became rich by things you did, or became poor by the things you did or did not do. You see, it's all about choices. Live here and start making some changes. What kind of future do you see? Paint your pictures from the scriptures. Pick your future. What kind of business do you want? Ordinary business, like everybody else, or the one that people travel far and near to look for. Leaders are not born, but leaders are raised in an insightful book by Bishop Dr. Michael Huttonwood. Available in paperback and on Kindle. Please call 0208-689-6010 or visit www.houseofjuda.org.uk and order your copy today. If you don't use your head to know how to invest, there are people who make money and they don't have minded gifts, so people manage it for them and sometimes steal it. But in addition to your physical gifts, develop your mind to be able to handle your own money. Or if even somebody is managing your money for you, read things that makes you know exactly how they are managing your money. Oh my God, I don't know if I'm in the right place. Am I in the right place? You can run. Many athletes have made a lot of money, have no money to show them because they had the physical gifts, but didn't develop their mind to know how to manage their money. Somebody manages for them a mess, or they quashed, they what? Misused because they didn't use their head. They had the gifts, all right, God gave them the gift, oh, but you don't only need physical gifts, you need mind dead gifts to go with your physical gifts. Am I helping somebody? Somebody say, Heavenly Father, you've given me physical gifts. I need minded gifts too. See, minded gifts help you to know how to manage what you have been given. People have been given a lot, but because they don't have minded gifts, they've lost it because they didn't know how to manage it. How do you learn to manage your physical gifts? Books. 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 How to invest, where to invest, when to invest, who to invest in, and who not to invest in. That's using your mind. You are physically gifted, but your mind, you don't have minded gifts, so you lose all the invest. I mean, any of you here, I can guarantee, I don't know what your plans are, but I can guarantee that if I give any of you black people here $500 million, I would like to believe that as a member of House of Judah, at least if you lose some crowd, at least you should leave at least hundred million dollars. But to lose all, tell your neighbor, unforgivable. unforgivable. So tell your neighbor, it's time to develop your minded gifts. Let me hear you say that again. Let me hear you say that again. Let me hear you say that again. You see, do you know what the difference between those who don't have minded gifts and those who have minded gifts? 
Those who have minded gifts will invest in a property and invest in land. Those who don't have minded gifts will chop their money. Say what? Buy cars, buy shoes, buy all kinds. And then at the age of 60, they don't have anywhere to live because they didn't use their head. It will never happen to anybody who is listening to me. Yeah. I said it will never happen to anybody who is listening to me. Yeah. If they will do what I'm saying. It's not a prophecy you can just receive. Buy land from your hometown. If you are thinking of going back, every time you go back to Africa, you are perching in the family house. Ah, Shall I carry on or shall I stop? Please lift up your head. Every momentous change throughout biblical and contemporary history was initiated by those who desired the change. Every change is initiated by the one who desires that change. Write that down. Every change is initiated by the one who desires that change. Every dramatic change in any individual's life was initiated by that desperate individual. Many are waiting for God to change their situation when God is actually waiting for them to make the first, take the first step. You'll be surprised to discover that God never does anything on this planet or in our lives or in our families until we request for his intervention. God never does. God will not arbitrarily just come and then give you a husband. Because he doesn't know whether you want a husband or not. Maybe you want to be single for your life. That's why he met blind Bartimaeus and asked blind Bartimaeus, what do you want? Because blind Bartimaeus could have wanted DSS uh, welfare allowance. But he doesn't want his sight to be restored. So that's why you can't assume that somebody wants something. They have to be desperate enough to want it and to do what it takes to take it. Hannah. Woke up one month. I'm going to give you some few examples, then we close. Hannah wanted a child. Went to church. Sat down in front of the church building and started praying. Then a man of God saw her talking and said, Did you drink Pilsna or uh, Tenant's beer last night? He said, No, no. My heart, I have a longing for a child and I want to see a change in my situation. The man of God said, a year from now. And a year from now, Samuel came. Jacob's name meant deceiver, supplanter. He went, wrestled with an angel, and then said to God, I'm not letting you go until you change my name. That very day, his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. Jabez was known as sorrow from day one. It had plagued him throughout his whole life. One day, he prays a prayer. God Bless me indeed, enlarge my course, change my story. That very day, change of story. Woman with the issue of blood, menstruating for 12 years continuous, no break. Normal women menstruate once a month. This woman's condition was 12 years continuous, no break. In the 12th year, she decided something must change here. And I don't care whether I'm supposed to be outside or among people. Wiggled her way through people's legs. Touch the hem of Jesus' garment. The Bible says, the moment she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, the fountain of blood dried out. Those who want to see change must be desperate for the change. If it's information you need, you should be desperate enough to go for the books that you need. If it is prayer you need to pray, you must be desperate enough to fast and pray to see your change. Desperate, dramatic things only happen to people who are desperate to see change. God will not arbitrarily just come. I mean, Israel was in bondage for 400 years. And then started crying out to God. And then God sent Moses. I mean, God knew Israel was in bondage all those years. Why didn't God arbitrarily, unilaterally, just come and say, they are my people. Let me save them. No. Somebody has to cry out. Somebody has to do something different to see something different. Write it down. Somebody has to do something different.
to see something different. Things never change until you want them to change. Somebody must want something bad enough for them to take it. 2 Corinthians 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Look at where it starts from. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then, somebody say then. Amen. So there are things they must do if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and call on my name. I will hear them, I will answer them, and I will heal their land, heal their ministry, heal their church, heal their family, heal their bodies, heal their marriage. But first of all, they must call on me. They must change, move from their wicked ways. They must humble themselves. They must seek my face. Then will I. Then will what? You know, listen to this scripture. Uh, probably some of you will be surprised to discover this. Psalm 115 verse 16. Do you know why God never does anything on this planet except people pray? Psalm 115 verse 16 says, The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. This will change your life. The heaven... Even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. So, we are supposed to be in charge here. Anything we want to see here, we must give God permission to do it here. Are you all here? It's very shocking to many believers. But that's exactly the way. He said the earth. Did you, did you put the scripture up? The, the heaven. Even, listen to the thing. The heaven. Even the heaven belongs to who? The earth belongs to who? So the, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth, where do you live? Where do you live? But the earth has he what? Given to who? Who are the children of men? Say me. So heaven is God's dwelling place. Earth is our dwelling place. So for God to do anything here, that's why he put Adam here. For God to do anything here, he needs to speak to us. That's why he said, I want to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But can I hide it from my friend Abraham? He's on earth. Let's find out what Abraham has got to say about my intentions. Amen. You see, this message helps you to even change the way you pray. Because your, 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 your approach to prayer changes. Hey! I must give God permission to operate here. That's why I said Matthew 18, whatever you bind, I can't hear you. Whatever you bind, the word bind means disallow. Whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you lose shall be loose. So where does the change begin from? Earth. And who is on earth? To give God permission to come on. Your wife, Rebecca, is barren. God knows. For four years, your wife is still barren. Isaac goes to God. My wife is barren. That must change. Then God opens the woman's womb. What happened for four years? Every change you want to see on earth and in your life, you initiate it. You want to see more things, more openings, more opportunities. Develop yourself for those opportunities. When they come, you can just step in. All change begins with you. When Daniel was going to pray to reduce the 70-year slavery to 68 years, he read a book. Everybody say he read a book. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. He read a book. And the book said, though you're supposed to be staying there for 70 years, it can be reduced. So he prayed, and the slavery was reduced by two years. That's why I began this series by saying, you can either elongate your suffering, shorten it, or end it. House of Judah, in association with Leaders Factory International, presents Higher Heights 2014, The Emergence of World Changers, with special guest speaker, Pastor Matthew Ashimaloo, KICC. God has crossed his hands. Favor is coming to your house. When it is all over, the devil will be shaken off. And your host, Bishop Michael Huttonwood, People are not disadvantaged, they are just ignorant. It's
is ignorance that pre keeps people from enjoying certain things. From the 24th of October through to the 26th at House of Judah, first floor Palm Croy House, 387 London Road, Croydon, CR03PB. Details are shown on your screen. Please call 020-689-6010 or visit www.houseofjudah.org.uk for further details. Is a man on a mission. With a mandate to raise generational leaders. Called to set in order the things that are out of order. And to bring leadership development, human capacity building, and wealth creation to all. Welcome to Maximizing Destiny with Dr. Michael Hutton Wood from the House of Judah. The Leadership Factory, raising generational leaders, impacting the nations. Also watch us on KICC-TV for Leadership Secrets and Maximizing Your Destiny series every week, Monday through Saturday. Your host, Bishop Michael Huttonwood. Where God isn't, there is no vision. And where there is no vision, the people perish. And where there are no people, Details are shown perish. on your screen. Please call 0208-689-6010 or visit www.houseofjudah.org.uk for more details. Thank you for tuning in to Maximizing Destiny with Dr. Michael Hutton Wood from the House of Judah, the Leadership Factory, raising generational leaders, impacting the nations. We hope you have been blessed.